Bibles. We on Wednesday night. We are in what book of the Bible? We are in the book of Psalms, and let's bring everybody up to speed. We looked at Psalm 79, it was about God is needed. Then we looked at Psalms 80, and it was about God is wanted. So we went from God being needed to God being wanted. And then the last time we was here was uh, Psalms 81, where God wants Israel. And we can also say that God wants us, or God wants you. So God is needed, God is wanted, and God wants you. Now, we found out last time that we worship through music, through written word, through spoken word, and through our obedience. And when we have broken worship, it will lead to missed blessings. Psalms 82 is where we're at tonight, if you want to find that in the Bible. I've entitled this one, God Wants Justice. God Wants Justice. Psalm 82 is written by a Psalm of Asaph. Remember, he wrote 11 Psalms. And this is a plea for justice. If you have your Bibles open to Psalms 82, we're going to look at verse 1, and this would be Roman number 1. God summons earthly judges to a heavenly assembly. Here it goes. It says, God stands or presides in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. It means that the assembly of gods are standing before God. Now, what is this word God when you see it in Scripture? If you have a New King James Version of the Bible, it should be a lowercase g because it is not God that we're talking about. Elohim is the Hebrew word. Elohim is used over 2,000 times in our Scripture to, work, to refer to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But it's also used in, in other capacities. It's not just used for God. It's also used for false gods. And in this case, as well as Exodus 21 and 22... It, God is speaking about and speaking to human judges. And there's a reason. We're going to cover that in a moment. God stands as judge among the judges. Typically, in those days, a judge sat to hear a case and then stood when he delivered the judgment. Today, the judge usually sits while delivering the judgment and the defendant stands. Look at verse 2. Verse 1 and 2 go hand in hand about the judges being summoned to the heavenly court. Look what it says in verse 2. It says, this is God speaking to the earthly judges. How long will you judge unjustly or unfairly? And how long will you show partiality or favor to the wicked? So the unrighteous judges had perverted their calling. And you may say, well, what was their calling? I'm glad you asked. It was to represent God himself by establishing justice on earth. Then we get to the next little word that says silah. Now, that could be a musical uh, annotation to say pause. It could be to say pause the words and allow the music to play. Uh, we take it upon ourselves to understand it means to meditate on what was said, to think about what was just said. So you are to think about what was just said. God has summoned earthly judges to his heavenly assembly. And now he's asking, how long are you going to judge unrighteously? Now, Matthew chapter 25, verse 31, as well as Acts 17, 31 says, When the Son of God comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, then Jesus will sit on the throne of His glory, because God the Father has appointed a day on which Jesus will judge the world in righteousness, by whom the Father has ordained. And then when we look at the challenge that is found in uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 19, written specifically from God to judges, it says uh, where God is ch challenging the human judges by saying, Take heed to what you are doing, for you do not judge for man, but for the Lord, who is with you in judgment. Now, therefore, let the fear of the Lord come upon you. Take care and do it. For there is no iniquity in the Lord our God. There is no partiality, nor is there taking of bribes. In other words, judges sit on the bench because they owe justice. God will hold them accountable for the justice they are supposed to be delivering because they represent God. Now, before you say, this has no bearing on me, what am I listening to it for? There is times in our lives where we're put in a position of leadership or authority to where we have a final say in something. Whether it's raising our kids or grandkids, whether it's uh, uh, within uh, the work environment, whether it's in our neighborhood, whatever it is, there will be times that you'll have a position to where you have the authority to make judgments. Keep in mind, you represent God. Roman numeral 2. 
God reviews his commands to earthly judges. That's for our benefit. Verses 3 and 4. God's going to review his commands to earthly judges. Here he goes. He says that they are to defend who? Oh, yeah. The poor and the fatherless, the orphans. They are to do justice to the afflicted and the needy. They're supposed to protect the rights of the poor. That is what the whole purpose of them being there was for. And look at verse 4. They are to deliver or help the poor and needy or the helpless. They're to free them from the hand of the wicked. They're supposed to save them from those who are doing evil. God expects all judges to administer true justice like the teachings in the law and God's basic desire to that the defendless should have a defense. Justice should be uh, available to them. So you've got people that have money who do things that are wrong to people that are poor. And just because the people that have money have money, they shouldn't be able to buy the judgment to put more restraints or more condemnation upon those who are poor. The poor are supposed to be able to take them to court and the judge is supposed to be righteous in his judgment so that the poor, the needy, the helpless have a course of action to get justice. Now, we know that doesn't happen, never does happen, never has happened. It is not uh, something that is of great value to most of us because we know how corrupt it is. We can look at uh, judicious systems in all the other countries in this world, and there's always, always, without a doubt, corruption. Why? Because power corrupts. Money corrupts. And men are just fallible, and we fall into the same trap over and over and over. But God knew that. What does God say? Well, Roman number three, God hears complaints from the oppressed. Look what he says in verse five about that. They do not know what's happening. The judges may be well educated. They may have a high standing in the community. They may be arrogant. They may not even listen to instruction. They may... If they don't listen to instruction, then it proves that they're ignorant. They don't know as much as they think they know. Sometimes they think they know everything about everything. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are unstable. Now, we've changed gears toward the end of that. And God is saying that, judges, you should know better. You should have the education, you should have the experience and the understanding to be fair to those who are poor. And the poor are walking around not knowing what's going to happen because it's like the foundation of the world is shaking. What does that mean? It means when power, money, corruptness is in leadership, they don't have any resort. They have no help. They have nothing to do. You know, you've heard you said, throw yourself upon the mercy of the judge. <laughs> It's not going to happen when they're corrupt and they're getting bribed and they're taking that money from someone else to make sure the verdict is in the, the, the direction that the wicked want it to go. So therefore, it makes the court system very unstable. Well, we got good news because see in Roman number four, God's judgment upon the earthly judges is found in verses six and seven. And these verse six and seven are kind of unique. So those who are usually giving verdicts are now going to hear a verdict placed upon them. Look what it says. In verse 6, I said, now this is God speaking to the judges. You are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Another way to look at that is that I, the Most High God, you are gods. You are my own sons. Look at verse 7. But you shall die like men. In other words, you're going to die just like all people must die. You're going to die. And you're going to fall like one of the princesses. Your life will end like that of any ruler. In other words, you are not above death. It is the great equalizer. Now, you may remember Jesus. He quoted these two verses right here when he was talking to the religious authorities who wanted to stone him for declaring himself to be the son of God. Back in John chapter 10, Jesus pointed out that God called human judges gods. And they themselves revered themselves as religious leaders, as gods, with a little G. Therefore, why would they want to pick up stones to stone Jesus when he just said, I'm a son of God, the, the son of God? Because they knew what he meant. They knew that he didn't mean he's just a son of God, like all people are children of God. All people are sons and daughters of God. 
He didn't mean it like that. He meant that he was equal to God, that he was God in the flesh before them. He was the Messiah that had been declared to come. He was the Christ they had been anticipating. They knew exactly what he meant. Therefore, their anger rose against him because they weren't really looking for the Messiah. They didn't have any desire to see the Christ because it would take away their authority and their power that they had. And power and authority can lead to corruption. And a matter of fact, it's kind of comical because Jesus goes in as he's talking to those religious leaders and he goes into verse 7. And Jesus points out that they, those religious leaders, were just as corrupt as these judges and they will die. They will face their fall. And then we get to verse uh, Roman number 5, which is people's prayer for divine justice. The last verse of chapter 82, and we will stop there tonight, is people's prayer for divine justice. Look what it says in verse 8. Arise, O Lord, or it might mean get up, God. Judge the earth, for you shall inherit all nations. That is saying, God, you be the judge. You be the leader over all these nations. In view of the overwhelming disaster and of the wickedness of the judges that, that, that he had created, the poor and afflicted of that time and all time, Call out for the true judge, God himself, to come. Their cry will not go unheard. The righteous judge is coming, and he will establish justice. All people of all nations really do belong to Jesus, and his judgments will be righteous. So whenever you get yourself in a position where you need to make a judgment, you need to make sure you're doing it to honor the Lord and reflecting him in what you decide Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for what you have in store for us. Thank you that you want to speak to us, encourage us, love on us. You want to protect us. And Father, we pray that we hear your voice, listen to your direction, your instructions, and do what it is you ask us to do. Father, we pray that you would bless us as we go throughout the rest of this week, that we'll have our spiritual eyes open looking for who you would like for us to share you with, who we, you would like us to, to speak good things about you to. Well, Father, those that are studying your word, that we can come alongside to encourage, to study with, to pray with. We thank you for what you want to do in and through us this week. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.